In this video, we'll show you how to make one of Italy's most famous breads. Short, soft inside, crunchy on the outside, with a golden surface dotted with pale fingerprints. It is the unbeatable focaccia genovese. Let's start with the dough. We need a strong flour for the job. Dry yeast, 2 teaspoons or 6 grams. Food leavening of about 3 hours at 72 Fahrenheit, roughly 22 degrees Celsius. Now we add the mold to give our focaccia both color and fragrance. We move on to the water. Room temperature, 12 ounces, or about 330 grams, which will produce a dough with 60% hydration. We'll add the dry ingredients a little at a time. In goes the olive oil. And a bit of lard, the other essential fat in the focaccia genovese. Here we are, it's time to work the dough with our hands. Nice, so soft. It's a dough that leaves your skin velvety by the time you're done kneading. Let's transfer our dough to a lightly oiled countertop. And finally we add the salt. We knead the dough by hand for 15 minutes. If needed, let the dough rest for 10 minutes. Lightly oil the counter again and keep kneading until the dough is smooth. Or just use the dough machine for 10 minutes at low speed. Perfect. It doesn't matter how you get there. At the end, the dough should look like this. Now we'll stretch the dough to see the lovely gluten mesh that has formed. Look how far we are able to stretch the dough without tearing it. It looks like a giant bubble gum. Now let's close the dough. Folding the dough like this gives a remarkable structure to our dough. On top of that, two folds. We make sure the dough is nicely closed, like this. And we let it rest for 30 minutes.
Our dough has relaxed as you can see, time to split it. We want to make two panetti, portions if you will, focaccias, of about 470 grams each, a little over a pound. Now we give our dough a final round of folds, book fold, and then a letter fold. The result of all this work is a well-strung bread with a lot of strength. We do the same thing for the second piece of dough and we let the dough balls rest for another 30 minutes. Time to move our dough to their trays. As mentioned, we're using a 40 by 30 centimeters or 16 by 12. Pretty ordinary baking trays here in Italy. Sprinkle of flour. We roughly flatten the dough with our hands. And then we use a rolling pin to finish the job. It's important to create a rectangle about the same size as the baking tray. The focaccia genoese is about one centimeter, or roughly half an inch, when baked, so pretty short. Yeah, this is perfect. Into the tray. A few adjustments. A sprinkle of flour. And we move on to the other focaccia. We have the two on the trays, now we cover the trays and let them rest for 20-30 minutes before giving the dough any final adjustments if needed. Um, but well, not much to fix here, but sometimes the extra time gives the dough a chance to rise or relax a little bit, letting you better stretch it to the borders. Now we let the dough rise in the tray for an hour and in the meantime let's prepare the ingredients for our focaccia toppings. We'll make one focaccia with onions and olives, it truly is a classic. So we cut two onions into slices, olive oil, and in the microwave for three minutes to pre-cook them makes them more digestible. Let's move to the olives. Not much to do here. We just want to soak them in water for at least half an hour to let them purge any excess salt. And finally, we'll prepare the brine. The brine is another characteristic of focaccia genovese. But what is it? It's simply water with 5% salt. 
De Bruyne will give the focaccia fingerprints that classic pale color, which contrasts beautifully with the rest of the surface, which will be golden. It's time to make our holes and leave our unmistakable mark on the focaccia. Another sprinkle of flour to prevent our fingers from sticking to the dough, and we begin to play the piano. Firm pressure, pressing hard all the way to the bottom of the tray. We start on one side and we finish a few inches from the opposite side. Turn and we complete the work. Here it is. <laughs> Lovely, right? Let's move on the other focaccia. Now the holes are there. Time to add the oil in the middle. And then we pour half of the amount of the brine we made directly over the oil. Half in one focaccia, half in the other focaccia. Gently, we use our hand to spread everything evenly. And at this point you can turn the pan a bit so that the liquid reaches the borders and gets evenly into every single hole. That's perfect. Let's do the other focaccia. Now we leave them to rise, uncover this time, for about 45 minutes. In the meantime, we place a pizza stone on the floor of the oven, preheat the oven at 450 Fahrenheit or 230 Celsius, and voila! Ready to bake! In goes the first focaccia, 450 Fahrenheit, 230 Celsius, static, for 15 minutes, a relatively short bake time. And while the first focaccia is baking, we'll finish topping the second focaccia with the onions and olives we prepared before. Here it comes. Beautiful. Bellissima. Soft. Crunchy. Golden. The smell beckons us to take a bite. Let's look underneath. Beautiful. I love the B-side. Look at that. What a beautiful expanse of pale holes. They look bleached. But before having a taste, we still have to bake the other one. Same temperature and time. And here it is. Smells so good. Now we can indulge in a taste. Golden, crunchy, side B, equally perfect. Into the mouth. Mmm, so soft, with a delicate flavor. 
I understand why the Genoese dip this in cappuccino and eat it for breakfast. And now the one with the onion. Also this has a perfect bake. Well, maybe we won't dip this one in cappuccino though. Better enjoy with a glass of white wine in this case. And check this out, look how it tears. You can truly see how soft the focaccia is inside. And don't forget to subscribe to Piatto Recipes, to click on the bell, and let us know in the comments how you make your focaccia genovese.